Windows 11 is now available to the masses. But what if the software you use doesn't support it? What if it's buggy? Or what if something goes wrong with the update process and borks your whole computer? Don't fret, because we're gonna show you guys the proper process to perform the free upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11, including backing up all of your data. And with the help of Acronis and their CyberProtect software, we're gonna show you how you can update temporarily with the ability to completely undo it if you don't like the results. I mean, what could go wrong? Before we can even think about running Windows 11, we're gonna need a system to install it on. So to stand in for your average home computer, we've got Jake's Test Bench. It's nothing crazy. 16 core Ryzen 9 5950X, 32 gigs of 3600 mega transfer, Trident Z Neo memory, a 2080 Ti, and a two terabyte NVMe SSD. Okay, it's a little crazy, but you know, Jake, he doesn't settle. <laughs> nothing but the best for Jake. <laughs> Look, the important part is that we've got some critical documents, okay? We've got some family photos, we've got some programs on here, and we don't want to lose any of it. Okay, we've got some family photos here. None of these people are my family. Are these just, are these just stock family photos or something? Royalty free, excellent. Uh-oh, uh-oh, got the nudes. Ah! I love your cat. <laughs> Enough fooling around. In order to install Windows 11, we need to make sure our PC supports TPM 2.0, Microsoft's new hardware security requirement. What is TPM? Well, in short, it's a hardware device that provides the system with a safe and dependable place to execute cryptographic functions, like for disk encryption or for safe boot. To check if your PC supports it, Microsoft has a handy little tool called the PC Health Check. Dun, 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 dun. TPM 2.0 must be supported and enabled on this PC. More about enabling TPM 2.0. According to this, our system supports all the other requirements, so it's just a matter of figuring out if and how we can enable TPM 2.0. To find out if we have support for it, we could Google it, but we are going to just go straight into our BIOS by going into the recovery menu and clicking restart now under advanced startup. From here, we click troubleshoot, advanced options, Da, 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 da. UEFI firmware settings. Boop. You can also just restart your PC normally and mash the delete key or whichever key it is to get into your motherboard's UEFI BIOS, but this way you don't have to worry about missing this prompt. It'll go straight in there. The setting we're looking for here is called FTPM on most Ryzen boards, and it's usually in the advanced menu. On Intel platforms, it's usually under advanced, then trusted compute or trusted platform module. And we were pretty darn sure we were gonna find it here because all Ryzen CPUs past first gen do support TPM 2.0, and the same is true for Intel platforms past seventh gen. So let's go ahead and... Dun, 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 dun. Yay! Uh, no. This is for when a new CPU is installed. Let's go ahead and just do that. Windows update. We got our system, we verified it's compatible, we just go ahead and... Okay, this is actually not a problem. We just need to check for updates again. Oh my God, it totally doesn't go away. But this is exactly the kind of thing that gives people anxiety about performing a major update like this. I mean, even going from Windows 10 to a different version of Windows 10, there have been situations where people have ended up with a bricked install, so they've got to put all their applications on again, which is a real pain in the butt, or even worse than that, a complete loss of data. So it is always recommended that you back up your data before for performing any kind of major operating system upgrade like this one, especially if it's done by a company that can't seem to synchronize PC health check results with the Windows updates. I mean, it's not exactly confidence inspiring, is it? This is where Acronis comes into play. <laughs> Since the last time they did a sponsored video with us, some things have changed. What used to be Acronis True Image, their backup software, is now Acronis CyberProtect Home Office. So, no more paying for antivirus from one company, backup from another company, it's everything. Backups, antivirus, malware protection, all in one. 
Right away when we jump in, we're presented with the backup menu, which is exactly what we're looking for. The software gives you a ton of customization options. You can back up the entire system, a specific disk, a specific folder. Heck, you can even cryptographically certify backups, kind of like a notary would certify a document in real life. For our purposes, we want to make a complete backup of the system. So if for whatever reason we decide we want to go back to Windows 10 or even migrate our install to a different machine or to a virtual machine in case we wanted to go back and grab stuff, but we probably won't need it, we can do that. You can see here we've already set up a backup to Acronis' cloud service and I'm just going to go ahead and synchronize it. They include 500 gigs of storage with the advanced tier and a terabyte with the premium tier, so we'll be making use of that. You don't have to use their cloud storage though. You can back up to an external drive, a NAS, a separate partition on your system drive if you have extra space, or all four if you want. <laughs> now that our disk scan is complete, you can see it's synchronizing all the changes that we've made since we last backed up. That's really important because if it was doing a full upload every single time, you would absolutely destroy the data cap on your internet connection. <laughs> so this is only gonna take a couple minutes here. Of course, if you don't wanna worry about data caps or you're impatient, the fastest way to back up is to an external drive. That particular one is a Gen 4 NVMe SSD plugged into a USB 3.10 gig port. So this should be pretty darn quick. Let's go ahead and add a backup. Do, 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 do. Change destination, volume D, and let's go to options, exclusions, and we do not care about backing up our Steam games folder, for example. So we're not gonna bother with that. You know what? Okay. This is a total weird edge case, but there are particular games you may actually want to back up. For example, with Beat Saber, sometimes they roll updates that break all my mods, and so it's nice to have my mods and stuff all backed up. Exclusions can be handled in a handful of ways. For example, by default, it doesn't back up .tmp files because they're by definition temporary. And then we're gonna go ahead and select our common path because realistically, if something goes catastrophically wrong, we will just download our games again. Oh, a Cronus Survival Kit allows you to restore your data even if your OS fails. Special partition that's bootable. Oh, cool, okay, yes. Yeah, I think I understand. So basically it's just a bootable partition on your backup that allows you to restore your entire OS without needing to reinstall it. That's awesome. One small bug we found is that if you create a survival kit and then try to back up right away without restarting the software, it gets a little bit confused because it just created a new partition on that drive. Uh, we've let Acronis know and they're going to fix it though. There we are, now we're ready. Now we're not gonna get too deep into the options menu here because if you're a power user, there are a ton of different knobs and dials that you can twist according to your liking. We're gonna go with the default weekly schedule, but I mean, you can tell it, hey, upon, Shut down, for example, run a backup, super cool. We're just gonna go ahead and put our exclusion back in here. We really do not wanna wait around for that to back up. And then under advanced, we're gonna go to backup protection and we're gonna encrypt the drive because it costs us basically nothing. And it means that nobody else is able to poke around in our backup where you're gonna use AES-256 encryption. This is, wow, that's a lot faster than uh, backing up to the internet. It's going at two and a half gigabit per second. Now that the backup's complete, we can see the file on the drive and as long as we remember our password, open it up and browse it. So if there's anything that we wanted to grab and carry over to our new install, even if we decide we are sticking with Windows 11, we could absolutely do that. Like these Nvidia display drivers, for example. Very important, I'm glad we included these. Unfortunately, Windows Update is still not offering us the upgrade, but that's actually good because it gives us an opportunity to show you guys the workaround. If you have a TPM 2.0 and otherwise compatible system, and for whatever reason, you're not able to get the update through Windows Update, just search for the Windows 11 Installation Assistant and download that. It's like, imagine being the team whose job it is, is to clean up the mess of the Windows Update team, right? Like you create this entire tool, this entire team of people just because those other tools and that team couldn't make their tool. They're, they're the I, know, I know, I know, I know. But if you, it, the point is if you wanna have a button to say force check for it, it should just be in Windows Update. I, this is gonna take a bit, but while we wait, let's talk about what happens if you don't have a TPM 2.0 enabled processor. Well, your first option is to ignore Microsoft's recommendations and install Windows 11 anyway. 
Using the official ISO, which is available on Microsoft's website, you can actually bypass the requirements as long as you are doing a fresh install. It's worth noting that Microsoft does not support or endorse this method, so you're on your own if anything goes wrong. Another option is you may actually be able to install an add-on physical TPM on supported motherboards. This would mean that you would meet the TPM 2.0 requirement, but it doesn't necessarily mean that your CPU would magically be supported. So we'd recommend doing your own research here. Finally, you can always just do nothing. Windows 10 is gonna be supported by Microsoft all the way until October 2025. So you have nearly half a decade to upgrade to a compatible system down the line or switch to Linux, you know, like me. Get subscribed so you don't miss that series of videos. One fun little hack, see how it's going way faster now? If you type delivery optimization into the start menu, you can pull up this settings page where you can allow downloads from other PCs nearby, not necessarily even on your local network, and it'll just go like way faster. And here it is, Windows 11. Now to be clear, under normal circumstances, I always recommend a fresh install, but the subject of the video was how to upgrade, right? <laughs> It's working on it. It's only a 10 core, I think. Yeah, with a 16 core CPU. Don't worry, Windows 11, it's fast. It should be noted, Microsoft does have their own backup solution built into Windows. It's just that it's, I don't know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. The best part is after all that, <laughs> we get to sit through this now. What was it doing the whole time? Obviously, the first thing you do when you get a new Windows setup, including a big upgrade like this one, is make sure you've got all the latest drivers, particularly for Ryzen processors. AMD actually released, check this out, today, a chipset driver update that fixes a scheduler issue that was causing Ryzen CPUs to uh, not have very good performance in Windows 11. And we've landed. We got that new sexy center start menu if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, I gotta say, the muscle memory is good. <laughs> gonna kill me on this one. Wow, it actually like has some idea what you might actually be looking for. Okay, do you have TeamViewer on here? Yeah. Because if I search for Teams, it'll T-E-A-M-S on my computer upstairs, it'll find TeamViewer instead. Okay, this is awesome. Yeah, immediately, I mean, I was expecting it to work because basically Windows 11 is a Windows 10 update on like roids, but it worked, that's great. Now let's show this, okay, this is cool. So if you hover over the maximize button, you actually get all these different options for how you wanna maximize it. You can be all like, oh, I wanna put it here. And then maybe I'm gonna put this one here. And maybe I'm gonna put this one here. Cool, right? But can you do like, diet? you can! Yeah, I clicked the two buttons and it went to a corner. Okay, that just changed my life. Ooh, auto HDR, that's what we wanted to do, okay. So let's use HDR and then let's hope, yeah, it doesn't look like absolute poo-poo the second we do that, which is great. Auto HDR, here we go. Nope, that's definitely working in a window. You can see it dimmed everything around it. Yep, and let's just watch something that's not in HDR and it looks very normal. Wow, okay. Oh, this is huge. When I'm duplicating my display, cause man, I have had some situations where I'm duplicating my display for some reason and then a notification comes up and it's like confidential information from like Microsoft Teams. Speaking of Microsoft Teams, this is really dumb. <laughs> if you click the sign in button and then you enter your work account, it just tells you your password is wrong, which is not a useful error. Let's see, I'll show you. Here we go, ready? That's definitely the right password. Your account or password is incorrect. If you don't remember your password, reset it now. But that's not actually what you need to do. What you need to do is get Microsoft Teams work or school. That's right, the integrated Microsoft Teams is not the other more different Microsoft Teams that you need for your work account. So you know what? Then let's say I'm so angry about that, that in spite of all the coolness, and I'm, I'm definitely gonna upgrade to Windows 11, in spite of all the coolness, I hate it. I wanna go back to Windows 10. Let's show that. So we'll pull up our Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office and let's go find our backup here. Let's jump over to the recovery tab. Entire PC recovery. This action is irreversible. All current data, including documents and applications will be removed. Okay, do you want me, do you want me to back it up then? Yeah, let me take that 
Okay, yeah, fine. We'll back it up. That way if Jake needs to get any not destroyed screen cap, he can do that. <laughs> this one's tall. That's actually interesting. I wonder how smart it's gonna be. Like, is it gonna go, oh, this is a different OS and create a completely new backup? Or is it gonna go, oh, I recognize a lot of this and just do an incremental backup. Now it's time to head over to the recovery pane. So we're gonna recover our entire PC rather than just files, which we could also do, or partitions or disks. Nope, entire PC. And we're gonna choose the version from 11.28 a.m. And recover now. This is irreversible. All current data documents and applications will be removed and changed by data of the chosen backup. Alrighty then. Here we go. Let's restart. Acronis, not free, obviously. But if you're a techie who's performing upgrades for people and stuff like that, man, could this ever save you a big old headache. Like, because you never know, right? What if you lose power in the middle of applying an update? Like, stuff happens, even if it's not Microsoft's fault. We're back, everything works. Jumping right into our right into our gaming here. The Rocket League executable is missing because we didn't back up our Steam games. You know what, it doesn't matter. The point is we were able to quickly and easily restore our Windows 10 installation, like with a couple of clicks. And that takes a ton of the anxiety and guesswork out of a big move like changing your operating system. So huge shout out to Acronis. Uh, Cyber Protect Home Office is a pretty sweet product. We're gonna have it linked down below. Thanks for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, maybe check out the time we deliberately installed ransomware that was also sponsored by Acronis and was a lot of fun.